Hi, I'm Laura and I'm here at Cats Protection in Hazelmere. Today I'm here with Bella and I've got the second part of the adventures of Tabby Cat. So if you haven't heard the first half of the story, I recommend watching that first. Let's see what happened to Tabby Cat. Safely, in the vaguely familiar surroundings of the back garden, Tabby Cat ran to the cat flap and headbutted it to get in. Ouch, she cried, it would not flip open. She looked through the clear plastic to see Wally staring straight at her. What time do you call this, madam? he demanded. Um, I don't know, can I come in please? I'm cold and hungry, she pleaded. Wally moved out of the way to let her pass and as soon as she was in, he jumped out the cat flap, tutting as he went. At last, she could get some food as she was starving. Tabby Cat, where have you been? We've been worried sick, cried Mrs Jones as she put down a sweet-smelling bowl of chicken cat food. Tabby Cat just ate and licked the bowl completely clean. It was delicious and, spent the next few, and she spent the next few hours washing herself and dozing with a contented feeling in her tummy. What's that? Mr Jones asked Mrs Jones whilst prodding Tabby Cat. Oh, it looks like a tick. She'll have to go to the VET. Tabby Cat looked curiously at Mrs Jones. What's the VET? she thought, but felt so exhausted she forgot all about it and slept through the night in her basket while Wally was keeping guard of his territory outside. The following morning she was being lifted into the carry cage and awoke abruptly in mid-air. She panicked and wriggled to get free, but it was no good. Mr Jones had a tight hold of her and put the lid on the cage. Where are you taking me? she meowed nervously. Oh, she's nervous. We'll get it sorted, said Mrs Jones. But what were they going to get sorted? After an anxious journey, Mr Jones lifted up the carry cage and walked into a strange and unfamiliar building and through a glass door which he had opened. Mrs Jones remained in the car. The cage was placed on the floor, which had a clinically disinfected smell about it. Tabby Cat also picked up lots of other smells which she did not recognise. Mr Jones with Tabby Cat, he announced to the lady sitting at a desk with a very large book on it. Oh, thank you. Take a seat, came the reply, as she ticked next to their names. Mr Jones picked up the carry cage and placed it on the chair next to the one he had decided to sit on. Tabby Cat looked around the room which had chairs around three walls, then glanced at the glass door which was now shut, noticing that someone else was approaching towards it. It opened and behind the owner was a very large dog who obviously did not want to come inside. In fact the owner was pulling the lead so hard that the collar around the dog's neck was moving, but not the dog. Come on Butch, the vet won't bite you, urged the owner. The lady behind the desk eventually assisted and the dog was finally sitting next to its owner, shaking. Tabby Cat found this rather amusing for a dog with such an impressively brave sounding name to be scared. What are you so scared of, Butch? She meowed. I hate the vet, he barked back. What is a vet anyway? She inquired. A vet, or veterinary, which is the full name, looks after us animals, answered a parrot, who was perched in a cage being carried in. And birds, it continued. Tabby Cat had never seen so many animals and birds in one place as one by one all the shapes, sizes and colours came into the waiting room. Jones called a very large man in a white coat from another doorway in the room which Tabby Cat had not noticed. Here, replied Mr Jones as he picked up the carry cage. Right then, what seems to be the problem, the vet asked, taking her out of her cage and placing her on a cold table. A tick, replied Mr Jones, probably from the sheep in the field behind us. That, that was it. Tabby Cat had caught something from one of the sheep who had showed her the way home. No wonder she felt so tired. The tick was draining her of energy. At that precise moment she felt a sharp pinprick as the vet used some tweezers to remove it and then put some stinging ointment on the area. There you go little lass, that should make you feel better, said the vet reassuringly to her. And she did indeed feel wide awake, straight away. The VET, as Mr Jones had called him, was great. Why was that dog so scared? He must have had a bad experience, she thought. What other animals would she meet who could claim they had visited a vet? Back at 
her new home, Tabby Cat began to feel much happier despite Wally not being very friendly. She spent her days exploring the house and back garden and enjoyed the freedom of eating, sleeping and washing herself whenever she liked. Too scared to go in the fields again, are we, madam? meowed Wally, teasingly. No, I just don't feel like it at the moment, she would reply on many occasions. In fact, she was scared of getting lost. But one sunny morning, she decided that enough was enough and plucked up the courage to venture into the fields again. At the hedge, at the end of the back garden, she hesitated before jumping through the gap. Maybe I'll find my family if I walk far enough, she thought, whilst walking on onto the soft green grass. She'd done it. She was actually in the field again. This time I will walk next to the hedge so I won't get lost. So she did just that. On her journey she could see the heron, numerous sheep, but none she recognised, as well as cows, the odd bull, pigs, chickens, and finally a very tall horse. She walked for miles, occasionally chasing after butterflies, bees and field mice, but never actually catching anything. Tabby Cat kept checking that she was still following the same route as the hedge when she came across lots of wooden barns, a lot more animals and farm machinery. She'd done it. She had reached the farm. But Wally had warned her that if she reached the farm, she'd gone too far. What did he mean by that? The farmyard looked very exciting and she could see all sorts of places to curl up and go to sleep without being disturbed. Bah, Tabby Cat bleated a familiar old and scruffy sheep. Bah, what are you doing here? Not even Wally comes here, he continued. Hello sheep. Do you live here then? meowed Tabby Cat. Bah, yep we do, moustache, we're being sheared today. And with that all the sheep were herded into a pen by a black and white sheepdog with a black patch over his right eye. Wow, what an amazing animal, she thought to herself. How does he do that? She sighed as she sat gazing dreamingly at him. He's wonderful. What are you staring at, little cat? barked the sheepdog. Oh, nothing, she replied, looking down at the ground, rather embarrassed. Not from round here, are you? My name's Patch. I look after all the animals for the farmer, he continued, whilst running around the sheep, trying to keep them all together. Hi Patch, I'm Tabby Cat and I live in the new house where Wally lives. If you know him, she meowed back to him. Know him? He don't like me at all since I ran after him last year. He tried to get in the cow shed without asking permission, he barked. So that was why Wally said not to come here, because he'd been chased away. Tabby Cat, who obviously liked Patch very much, felt that perhaps she would be able to come to the farm if she asked permission politely. Excuse me, Mr. Sheepdog, sir. Could I be so bold as to ask if I could sleep in some of those wonderful looking barns on the odd occasion? She meowed bravely. Well, now, Tabby Cat, you do look cuter than Wally, and you have asked. Yeah, go on then. But don't let the farmer see you. And he ran into the distance, following the sheep. Tabby Cat now had a place to visit and made lots of new friends, including all the sheep, cows, pigs, chickens, and the tall horse. She became very confident at introducing herself whenever she met a new member of the farm, but was careful not to get seen by the farmer, and managed to camouflage herself in the hay and hide behind machinery and animals whenever he approached. Her best friends were the two old and scruffy sheep, and the wonderful sheepdog who she adored as he was so skilled at getting all the farm animals into places and spaces that the farmer demanded. She tried to visit the farm on most sunny days, never telling Wally where she was going, just in case he followed. After all, she did not want him spoiling her fun and stopping her going to visit her friends, even if they weren't cats. Although she liked living at the Joneses, she also loved being on the farm, so decided to stay home on rainy days, which were mainly in the autumn and winter, and visit the hot farm in the spring and summer, like a summer holiday. She often wished her family were with her and wondered what they were doing and if they were as happy as she was. One winter morning, Mr and Mrs Jones seemed very busy as they were rushing around putting all sorts of things into suitcases. Now have you packed your sandals, sunglasses and hat? asked Mr Jones to Mrs Jones. Yes dear, he replied. Have I got the passports and tickets? Yes I have, she said to herself, and with that picked up Tabby Cat and Wally and put them in their carry cages. What was going on? Now then you two, 
You'll have a lovely time at the cattery. It's only for a week, Mr Jones said, while carrying them out to the car. Great, here we go again. Every year the same. How dare they treat me like this, hissed Wally, thudding his tail down violently on the base of his cage. What's going on, inquired Tabby Cat. They're going on their annual holiday, of course, Wally replied. He was not best pleased and looked extremely angry about it. When they were finally at the cattery, Wally and Tabby Cat were putting a pen together. I don't believe it, he hissed again. The pen was similar to the one she'd been in at the rescue centre, but this time she had to share it with Wally. They will come back and get us, won't they? She meowed nervously. Of course they will, madam, but I'm now stuck with you in this pen for seven days. And he turned his back on her and sat down, totting to himself. Tabby Cat, Tabby Cat, is that you, my darling? cried a cat from a pen in the distance. Mummy, she cried. Immediately there was a huge wail of cats crying and shouting. It's Tabby Cat, it's Tabby Cat. It couldn't be her whole family in the cattery, could it? Who's here, she meowed in a disbelieving manner. We all are, replied her dad. Was Tabby Cat dreaming? She nodded off without knowing it. It was not a dream though, this was real. She'd found her family, all of them. She ran past Wally to the pen's entrance and started scratching at the door with her two front paws, trying to open it, to no avail. She then tried pushing it with her head, but it was no good. She just could not budge it open. Finally, she gave up and knew she would have to ask Wally for help. He was already watching her every move. She turned around with her mouth open, ready to speak, when he meowed before she had the chance. I take it you require my assistance to greet your family, madam, he said. And with that, walked slowly over to her. He cleared his throat. Ha-hum, I need complete silence in order to concentrate. Complete silence, he bellowed. The cattery did indeed fall silent, and all the cats who were able to see from their pens watched astutely. Very slowly his front legs lifted off the ground and he was standing on only his two back legs. He looked three times bigger, which was pretty scary to a little cat like Tabby Cat. He looks like a large angry bear, she thought to herself. Even though she'd never seen one in real life, her dad had told her stories about them and Goldilocks. Wally, who was now the same height as the door latch, proceeded to gently move the latch until it lifted up the bar. He'd done it. The door opened. All the cats went wild, screaming with delight. Silence, he bellowed again as he got down on four legs again. The Tabby Cat's great escape. We need quiet, he continued. Tabby Cat went out, slowly checking that the coast was clear. It was, so she went looking for the pen that housed her family. When she found it, all her family sniffed and licked her through the bars. They purred with delight, but tried to keep their excitement to a minimum to avoid being heard. Her parents explained how one by one each of her brothers and sisters were taken back to the rescue centre as they proved too difficult for their new owners, but they kept crying. Her parents' owner became ill and went into hospital, so they too were returned. A kind family realised that they were all from the same family and took them all on, but they were currently on holiday. Where do you live now? she meowed. A new house, quite near a farm, replied one of her brothers. Not where Patch lives, she continued. We think there's a sheepdog there called Patch, but gather he won't have any other cats around in case they upset his little tabby cat. That's never you, he smiled as the penny dropped. They lived the other side of Patch's farm, ironically near to tabby cat, but never dared venture into the farmyard. Tabby cat, I think you have some explaining to do, shouted Wally. At last, tabby cat could see her family every day. Or could she? When Mr and Mrs Jones were home from their holiday, they placed their cases on the kitchen floor bef before putting Wally and Tabby Cat's carry cages next to them. It's good to be home, Mr Jones sighed, and these two seem happier together. They were indeed getting along much better since Wally had helped Tabby Cat escape from their cattery pen to visit her family. The cattery staff seemed to be very understanding as well. Now then, madam, Wally stared at her seriously. If you are to persist with visiting the farm and your family, I must escort you as any gentleman would. Tabby Cat meowed back. But Wally, the last time you went there, you... She was stopped mid-sentence as Wally flicked his tail across her face. 
He obviously did not want her to mention his bad experience. The next few weeks were heavenly and Patch the Sheepdog not only allowed Tabby Cat's family to visit the farm but he even accepted Wally without chasing after him. Despite this happiness, her feline instincts felt something was missing from her life. What are we here for, she meowed to her mum. Well, some cats are working cats and might live on a factory site or farm to keep the mouse population under control, while some household cats are here to keep their owners company, she replied. But what about pedigree and show cats like Wally, and what about me, she asked. Well now, Tabby Cat, you're a special cat. That's why you're here, answered her mum. Wally replied for her, she wants to be a show cat like me. It was true, Tabby Cat did want to be a show winner. But as she was not a true pedigree with official documentation like a Siamese or Persian, she could not enter a show. Or so she thought. You could be put in the household non-pedigree category, shouted her dad. What, you mean I could enter? Tabby Cat looked at Wally in astonishment. Why didn't you tell me, she shouted at him. Cat shows should not, in my opinion, have non-pedigrees in them, madam, he replied curtly. So she could enter if Mr and Mrs Jones took her along, and she set about her plan to ensure she got to the next show along with Wally, which she'd heard him bragging about to one of her sisters. She had two weeks, and at every opportunity she would leave little signs around the house which she thought would persuade them to take her. Sometimes, when Wally was not around, she'd remove one of his rosettes which were pinned to the notice board in the kitchen by jumping onto the worktop, knocking it onto the floor, then carry it in her mouth and gently place it in her basket. She also tried dragging the cat show newspapers and magazines from the magazine rack to her food bowl, even though it would take her some time to do so. The morning of the show had arrived. Wally had been taken to the pet groomers the day before and Mrs. Jo Mr Jones was frantically brushing him while Mr. Jo Mrs Jones packed her bag. Wipes, brush, treats, white litter tray, food bowl, water dish and blanket, and then totally out of the blue, and with Tabby Cat convinced that she'd failed in her attempt to go. Tabby Cat, come on, you're coming too. But Mr Jones, who was also unaware that she was going, stated, but you haven't booked her a place, you've got no equipment for her. Mrs Jones just grinned at him and put Tabby Cat in her carry cage. In fact, Miss, Mrs Jones had booked her place some time ago, even before Tabby Cat had talked to her mum about it. The journey to the cat show was a quiet one as Wally, who was looking immaculate and very fluffy, had nothing to say to Tabby Cat. Instead, he raised his, raised his eyebrows every time she glanced at him. Throughout the day, she was picked up, measured and stroked by many judges until she was abruptly taken out of her pen, put in a curry cage and placed on a table in front of hundreds of other cats and owners. And the best in show is... This little tabby cat announced a le little lady in a white coat who promptly clipped a large red rosette onto one of the bars of the cage. She had won it. What Mrs Jones hadn't told Wally, tabby cat or Mr Jones was that she'd entered both of them into a village cat show which did not have brood categories. Just a first, a second and third. <coughs> Could there be any more adventures for tabby cat? As word got round that Tabby Cat had won the village cat show and Wally had not even won second or third place, her reputation for being a little cat disappeared. She was now the show winning cat, which Wally accepted gracefully as it was not a recognised cat fancier's show. He kept advising other animals whenever he could. Tabby Cat thought she'd finally found what she'd been looking for in being a cat show winner, but little did she know what lay ahead of her. As the days turned into weeks and the weeks into months, her memory of the cat show faded and she began thinking about her time locked in the shed. I've been so wrapped up in my own little world. I've completely forgotten about other cats in trouble, she explained to Patch the Sheepdog. It was true. She, um, she had quickly forgotten about cats that were not as fortunate as her, so she decided it was about time to think about how she could help. But what can I do? she asked Patch. Just you wait, Tabby Cat, your time will come, he barked back. Early, one misty morning, while she was walking to the farm, she noticed a dark figure in the distance, dragging a light brown hessian sack. It appeared to have something moving inside. The figure was heading towards the stream. With her body low to the ground, she decided to follow, but kept far enough away not to be noticed. 
When the figure, whom she now recognised as the grumpy old lady friend of the farmer, got to the stream, she tossed the sack in and sprinted away immediately. A loud splash was followed by high-pitched screams and whimpers from the sack. Help, help! Tabby Cat ran as fast as her little legs would allow to the cries. The sack was caught on one of the jagged rocks, but half of it was submerged in the water. Whatever was in the sack was frantically trying to get out, but there was a knot tied at the top. Without thinking, Tabby Cat jumped onto the rock and with all her might and claws extended, she ripped a hole in it. Suddenly, two tiny ginger paws reached out of the opening. Tabby Cat tried to make the opening bigger, then two black paws appeared and before she knew it, she was pulling two furry animals to safety. On the bank of the stream, Tabby Cat, who thought she has just rescued two drowned rats, now had one ginger and one black kitten lying next to her. They were completely drenched and totally exhausted. Are there any more? she quickly asked. The reply from the panting black kitten was, no, it's just the two of us. A few days after the rescue, Mrs Jones said to Mr Jones, by the way, the rescue centre rang and said they've got homes waiting for the two kittens. They reckon they're only a week or so old. Where did you say you found them? Patch was right. Her time had come. Please don't go family bed, but Patch totally understood that she found her true vocation in life to help other cats. I'll be back, but I have to do this. I owe it to the rescue centre for saving us, and yes, I'll even miss you, Wally. And she walked over to the hills until she could no longer see the top of the farm buildings. The two old and scruffy sheep walked with her for a few miles until they got to the tumble down boundary wall. From there, she continued to walk alone into the sunrise. With one final wave goodbye of her paw, she was gone. Nothing was heard from Tabby Cat for weeks and her mum and dad were frantic with worry, but Patch knew she was okay, as he'd heard from another farmer's dog that the nearest rescue centre had started to build new pens as more cats were rescued than ever before and luckily more humans were adopting them. You know it's her, don't you, Patch barked comfortingly to Tabby Cat's mum. But how can you be sure? She doesn't know how to fend for herself out there in the big wide world. I think it is her, madam, agreed Wally, with a big smile on his furry face and his tail swaying softly. Mr and Mrs Jones were also worried about Tabby Cat as they thought she'd run away or been killed and often looked at Wally for comfort. Where is she, Wally? they would ask. Of course, he knew what she was doing but could not communicate it. Instead, he would spend more time sitting on their laps and purring, which was his way of making them feel better. Tabby Cat was in her element. She'd become very strong and very brave for such a little cat by unlocking latches, a trick she had learned from Wally, and risking her life while setting cats free and hoping they would be reported to rescue sensors. Whenever she was on one of her missions, as she liked to call it, she would lie low to the ground with her ears alert and listen constantly for any signs of distress such as cats crying or scratching or owners shouting or banging things. When she had established that they were indeed in danger and needed help, she would quickly but quietly find a safe route and avoided being seen or smelt at all costs. As once a dog picks up a cat's smell, it won't stop barking. When she knew it was safe to enter and set them free safely, she knew her job was done. Tabby Cat occasionally went home to reassure Mr and Mrs Jones and Wally that she was alive and well. She also visited the farm, where she would meet up with all her family and friends, as well as the other animals who would sit quietly and listen to her stories, which made most of them very sad to hear. She never claimed to be brave, or famous, or the most wonderful cat in the world, although most of them thought she was, especially Patch. Her stories were heard all over the country, and although most animals, especially cats, had not met Tabby Cat, they certainly knew of her, or knew a cat that had been rescued by her. She would meow only three words whilst rescuing cats in danger. I'm Tabby Cat. And that was enough. The next time you look after a cat, just think. They may have had the privilege of being rescued by Tabby Cat. And as far as we are aware, Tabby Cat is still helping cats in need, to this day. Remember to be kind to all animals, especially cats, and treat them well, as Tabby Cat might be watching you. So what a hero the tiny little Tabby Cat turned out to be. I hope you've enjoyed the story. 
I've got my next book ready and I look forward to bringing it to you soon. Bye for now.